It's the first day of December here in Korea, and I'm Lee Ji-yoon in Seoul. Let's get started with a glimpse of today's highlights. Korean exports rose nearly 10% on year in November, with shipments of semiconductors, general machinery, and petroleum products all recording double-digit growth. Consumer prices in November rose at the slowest pace this year, mostly due to a sharp decline in the prices of vegetables, gas, water, and electricity. These stories are more coming right up. But first, the Korean economy grew faster than expected in the third quarter, expanding 1.5 percent compared to a year earlier, according to the Bank of Korea. This is higher than a lead estimate of 1.4 percent released by the central bank back in October. It's also the fastest growth rate pace seen in seven years, with overall GDP growth for 2017 now being projected at 3.8 percent. Private consumption, construction investment and facilities investment all saw positive growth, bolstering the wider economy. Meanwhile, gross national income rose 2.4 percent on quarter thanks to improving trade conditions. And with that rise in Korea's GDP, the country's per capita income is expected to reach the 30,000 U.S. dollar mark for the first time next year. Total gross national income rose 2.4 percent on quarter in the July to September period to a seasonally adjusted $379 billion. At the end of 2016, real GNI per capita stood at roughly $27,500, but it is likely to close in on the $30,000 mark by the end of this year. Long seen as a barometer of a high-income nation, only 27 countries in the world had an average income higher than $30,000 as of October 2016, according to the IMF. Korean exports are going from strength to strength. Preliminary data for November shows the nation's booming semiconductor sector is continuing to play a key role in driving outbound shipments. That said, while growth was solid, last month's increase fell a little short of reaching double-digit figures. Our Won jong hwan has this report. Korea's latest export figures shows 13 months of consecutive export growth. The Ministry of Trade, Industry and Energy said Friday the nation's export in November hit nearly 50 billion U.S. dollars, up 9.6 percent from the previous year. South Korea's trade surplus came to $7.8 billion, marking 70 straight months in which the country's export have exceeded imports. Although the export growth figure which failed to reach double digits marks a slowdown from September's 35 percent surge in export growth from the previous year, the trade ministry remains optimistic about November's preliminary figures, saying it is the highest rate of an on-year increase ever recorded for the months of November. Nine out of the 13 major product types recorded posted increases, with five items such as semiconductors, general machinery and petroleum products recording double-digit export growth. Semiconductors in particular saw $9.5 billion in exports, recording their second-highest export figures of all time, and exports of general machinery products increased by $4.6 billion. Exports to all regions increased in November, with the exception of the Middle East, Outbound shipments to China, Korea's largest trading partner, climbed more than 20 percent, part of a fourth month surge to reach 14 billion U.S. dollars, Korea's highest ever monthly export to China. Korea's exports have been on a steady rise since November 2016. Along with exports, inbound shipments to the country also rose over 12.3 percent on year in November to 41 billion dollars. Won jong -un, Business Daily. In what could be a sign of slowing inflation, Korea's consumer price index in November grew at its lowest rate seen all year, weighed by a drop in vegetable and utility prices. Our Kim mo has more. For the month of November, Korea's consumer prices grew at the slowest pace since December last year. The index edged up 1.3 percent on year, slowing from the 1.8 percent rise seen the month before. Consumer prices increased by over 2 percent for three straight months since July before slipping below the 2 percent level in October. Statistics Korea attributed the slowing inflation figure to falling vegetable prices and cuts to utility bills. 
Vegetable prices plunged 14.6 percent on year, bringing down the entire index by 0.26 percent, while electricity, water and gas prices also dropped 6.7 percent. Meanwhile, agricultural, livestock and fisheries prices rose 0.7 percent last month, slowing from the 3 percent increase in October. Prices of industrial goods rose 1.4 percent and prices of public services climbed 1.8 percent. Core inflation, which excludes volatile oil and food prices, also increased 1.2 percent on year. Experts say the slowing trend could likely be reversed from December, as the base effect from the government's temporary measures to ease the nation's electricity bills last year will disappear. Kim Mogan, Business Daily. Earlier this morning, Korea's trade ministry held its second public hearing on possible amendments to the Korea-U.S. Free Trade Agreement. Our Kim Hae-sung takes us there. Korea's trade ministry held a second public hearing on the possible amendments to the South Korea-U.S. Free Trade Agreement on Friday. After the first public hearing last month, we held constructive meetings with the representatives from the manufacturing and agricultural sector to better reflect their opinion on the Korea-U.S. FTA. It comes after the first hearing was disrupted by angry farmers on November 10th, who also protested for 20 minutes before Friday's hearing. Before the 15-member panel meeting got underway in earnest, trade experts unveiled their economic feasibility studies. With regards to the agricultural sector, it said agricultural imports from the U.S. increased by a yearly average of 15 percent or 940 million U.S. dollars between 2012 and 2016, compared to the 2007 to 2011 period just before the FTA went into effect in 2012. The report also said U.S. beef imports have surged 124 percent since the FTA took effect, accounting for near half of Korea's beef market as of September 2017. Experts said Korea's agriculture sector should be exempt from the renegotiations. As for the manufacturing sector, Korea's exports to the U.S. saw a surplus mostly from the automobile sector while steel and petrochemical exports dropped. Korea's manufacturing trade surplus is not because of lower tariffs from the FTA, but mainly due to the U.S.'s lack of competitiveness in its machinery and automobile exports to Korea, as evidenced by the lower technological specialization index in those goods. The trade ministry also added that it will not just be on the defense when it comes to the renegotiations. Rather, it's eager to use the opportunity to raise the issue of anti-dumping tariffs from the Trump administration, expand work visas for skilled laborers, and renegotiate terms of the services industry according to WTO regulations. Public hearing has now come to an end. Now the trade ministry will finalize its process of gathering public opinion, draft its Korea-U.S. FTA renegotiation strategy and report it to the National Assembly this month, all part of the legal procedures to start a possible renegotiation with the U.S. Kim hae Business Daily. Let's now take a closer look at how the markets fared here in Seoul today. For that, we have our Lee Ju young joining us on the line. Ju young Hi, ji -yoon. The Kospi has still not been able to close above the 2,500 mark despite favorable news on the economic data front, including November's record export figures and higher-than-expected Q3 GDP growth. In fact, at the closing bell, the main board inched down 0.04% to close at 2,475.41. On the other hand, the junior Kostak closed up by a significant amount of 2.11% at 787.7. On the foreign exchange counter, the Korean won strengthened to 1,086.41 against the greenback on Friday. Experts say that the heavy selling from offshore investors is the main cause behind the Kospi's lack of momentum, with foreigners unloading roughly $208 million worth of net shares today. This marks the seventh consecutive trading day in which foreigners have been net sellers on the main bourse. The junior Kosdaq's big gain, thanks to the surge in pharmaceutical and biotech shares, is also seen as one of the reasons behind the Kospi's relative slump. Large cap stocks were seeing mixed uh, trading across the board today. Samsung Electronics and SK Hynix both saw gains of 0.08 and 0.78 percent, respectively, while top automaker Hyundai Motor fell about 1.8 percent and steelmaker Posco was down nearly 2 percent. 
Let's now talk about the cost deck a little bit. I mean, you said Ford investors have been dumping shares on the main bourse, but it's a completely different story on the tech heavy index. That's right. According to the Korea Exchange, the net buying from foreigners on the COSDAQ was the highest ever so far this year, as they bought in roughly $2.5 billion worth of net stocks. Just last month alone, foreigners bought roughly $420 million worth of stocks on the junior index. Experts say that introducing a new index comprising of listings from both the benchmark COSPI and the COSDAQ markets is likely to improve foreign investment sentiment. Increasing fiscal spending and enhancing support for SMEs is likely to ratchet up investments as well. This has been Lee ju for Business Daily. OPEC has decided to extend its production quota until the end of 2018 in order to ease the ongoing supply glut and support flagging oil prices. Crude prices are likely to trend higher following the move, while also spurring the United States to ramp up shale production. Here's our Cha Sang-mi with more. The 14 member countries of OPEC, including non-members headed by Russia, have agreed to keep reducing oil output to clear a global glut of crude oil. Since January, the oil-producing nations have been cutting supply by about 1.8 million barrels a day. My personal expectation is that 2018 will be more of the same as 2017, which is, which is I think, uh, healthy and, and manageable by the market. Initially, this collective action was prompted by record low prices that had dipped to the $30 level at the end of 2016. But the latest figure shows the barrel price has doubled to more than $60, a level deemed satisfactory, according to the Iran's oil minister. Russia, while agreeing to the extension of oil cuts, has expressed concerns the move could prompt a spike in crude production in the U.S., which is not part of the deal. Experts say Russia needs much lower oil prices to balance its national budget. OPEC says that over the past 11 months, the production cuts have halved the global excess of oil stocks. With the additional extension, experts predict demand for oil will outstrip supply in the latter half of 2018. Cha sang -mi, Business Daily. Every winter, birds migrating to Korea carry potential risks of triggering a bird flu outbreak. And concerns are especially high this year ahead of the upcoming 2018 PyeongChang Winter Olympic Games. So the government is taking extra precautionary measures to make sure that the Olympics are not affected by a possible bird flu outbreak. Our Park Hee-jun tells us more. Since a highly pathogenic strain of avian influenza was detected in the southern regions of Korea, the government has been putting maximum effort into eradicating the virus. The H5N6 strain was found in Jeollabuk-do and Jeollanam-do provinces and on Jeju Island, leading to the culling of tens of thousands of birds and a ban on transporting poultry. The situation became even more serious when the AI was discovered in Yangyang, Gangwon-do province, just about 50 miles away from some of the Olympic venues. Avian influenza has been popping up in various parts of the country. Although the virus detected here in Gangwon-do province was found to be less pathogenic, with the Winter Olympics a matter of weeks away, the government is devoting all its resources to contain the outbreak. The Moon Jae-in administration has been taking powerful counter and preemptive measures. Regional authorities in Gangwon-do province have ordered the slaughter or relocation of all poultry in the Olympic cities, even though AI has not been detected there. And even stronger monitoring is taking place in Pyeongchang. Pyeongchang. Disease forecasting used to take place once every month, but after H5N6 was discovered in Suncheon, it's being conducted every week in Pyeongchang. Forecast monitoring is important because it identifies the origin of the virus and allows us to make quarantine and preemptive efforts in the area. But despite many people's concerns, the virus is highly unlikely to infect humans and even less likely to be passed from person to person. There are no reported cases of human infection. H7N8 in China is known to be highly dangerous and lethal, but the current H5N6 virus found in Korea is unlikely to be transmitted to humans. 
With the government continuing to put its full effort into combating the disease and the help from the public, AI isn't expected to cause problems for the 2018 PyeongChang Winter Olympics. Park Ki-jun, Business Daily. President Moon Jae-in has emphasized that Korea needs to stay on top of technological changes in various industries if it wants to stay competitive. Now, the government plans to apply the concepts of the fourth industrial revolution into all parts of the economy, from farming to education and logistics. Our Elliot Kim has more. Fourth Industrial Revolution 1.0. The Korean government on Thursday unveiled its five-year plan to incorporate the fourth industrial revolution into its economy. 21 ministries and the fourth industrial revolution committee worked on this roadmap together. It is centered on the people and ties technology and infrastructure with social policies so that everyone can participate and benefit from fourth industrial revolution technology in the future. The government's plan has four main parts. First, it plans to support artificial intelligence-based medical services, smart factories and farms, and transport such as driverless cars to help lower cost and increase efficiency. These projects would require new technologies, so the government plans to invest a total of 2 billion U.S. dollars by 2022 and work with the private sector in research and development. It also plans to expand elementary and middle school education in STEM subjects and nurture experts in AI, robotics, and big data in colleges. And one detailed plan with a tight deadline? Korea aims to adopt a 5G network by 2019, making it the first in the world to do so. There are also plans to expand the Internet of Things network. Both of these are critical as a surge in data and sensors will require fast data processing capabilities. These are all good policies that will enable Korea, which has strong hardware technologies like semiconductors and cars, to find a new growth engine. The problem, however, is regulation. Compared to China, the U.S. and Europe, Korea has too many regulations across industries and financing for startups. Today, the time span for turning ideas into reality is short. To stay competitive in the fourth industrial revolution era, deregulation is a must. The government says the plan is expected to add over $117 billion to the economy by 2022. But to deliver on the plan, a more detailed policy, market deregulation and an evaluation system to meet targets on a step-by-step -step basis will be critical. Elliot Kim, Business Daily. Korean cosmetics exports have been growing steadily in the past few years, especially in Southeast Asia. Among those countries, Vietnam is viewed as one of the fastest growing markets for Korean beauty products. Our Ian Shin takes a closer look. Facial masks used on a daily basis, a nighttime skincare routine with more than five different steps. Along with pop music, TV dramas, and the stars in them, Korean beauty products are a big hit in the Southeast Asian country of Vietnam. It's not hard to find Korean beauty products in Ho Chi Minh City. Here in Hai Ba Chung Street, one of the most popular shopping districts of the city, many different Korean cosmetic giants have sold their wares for a few years now, and they're known as a go-to beauty stores for many locals. I use Korean products such as moisturizers and night cream on a regular basis. I like how most of them are made with natural ingredients, so I don't have to worry about my skin getting irritated. A lot of my friends at work also swear by Korean cosmetics. I like Korean makeup and skincare lines, especially the facial masks, which are excellent. I noticed the products really help even out my skin tone. In the last five years, sales of Korea's beauty products have been soaring in Vietnam, with the numbers growing almost threefold. According to the sellers here, items for natural, healthy-looking skin, along with oil control products and waterproof makeup they can stay on in the often steamy weather, are what local customers are after the most. We've been inviting local residents to try out our items, and many visitors come back a second or third time for more. Many of them are already familiar with Korean brands and types of products, so they usually ask for specific items. Sales of Korean makeup have jumped more than 30 percent last year in the 10-member association of Southeast Asian nations. And Vietnam, a country with a median age of just 30, and where the K-beauty wave is seemingly expanding, 
remains a market with an ever-growing potential for Korean cosmetics. Lee Eun-shin, Business Daily, Ho Chi Minh City. Time now for a look through some important global business news stories from the week with our Eunice Kim joining us in the studio today. Hello, Eunice. Happy Friday. All right, so North Korea fired what many now would agree to be an intercontinental ballistic missile, mm -hmm. which it claims to can reach the entire continental U.S. Now, it wasn't much of a market mover, but still, its implications uh, could be significant. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, there's plenty of analysis going on as we speak based on the information available including images that were uh, released by the North Korean media. Now, at a parliamentary hearing this morning in Seoul, Defense Ministry confirmed that Hwasong-15, as its name suggests, is in fact a new type of ICBM. Take a listen. Considering the flight characteristics and appearance, it is assessed that the missile was a new intercontinental ballistic missile and the flight test was successful. In the case it were fired at a normal angle, it would be capable of flying over 13,000 kilometers. That means it can reach Washington, D.C. In fact, the missile flew some 4,500 kilometers up into space. And for some perspective, that is some 800 kilometers higher than Pyongyang's previous test and 10 times higher than the International Space Station. Weapon analysts in the U.S. have been quoted as being surprised by the rocket's size, saying a powerful thermonuclear weapon shouldn't need to be miniaturized by much to be carried by this large missile. But Seoul believes Pyongyang still needs to prove it can bring the missile back into the atmosphere without destroying it on top of other critical technologies. The Unification Ministry said it expects testing will be put on hold for the rest of the year as cold winter conditions could prove to be a strain on fuel supplies. Seoul's Defense Minister Hong Young-moo said the timing is a shrewd move for North Korean leader Kim Jong-un as it is a milestone he could claim in a grand New Year's address, the state's, quote, completion of its weapons program. Uh, this is quite disturbing. But meanwhile, the dis diplomacy continues. President Moon Jae-in called uh, or they talked on the phone with U.S. President Donald Trump mm -hmm. after this missile test, right? That's right. And it's said to be uh, have been an hour long phone call in which the two leaders agreed pressure must be still kept on North Korea to push the state back to talks. The White House said that t the two leaders underscored the, quote, grave threat that came to light with this 3 a.m. missile test on Wednesday, undermining the security of the international community at large. Meanwhile, the Trump administration is impressing significant pressure on Beijing. U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Nikki Haley at a Security Council meeting this week singled out President Xi Jinping, calling on him to show leadership by cutting off oil supplies to Pyongyang entirely. Now, Beijing has refrained from such a drastic move, presumably because it does not want to see North Korea topple and turn into a failed state. In a tweet, President Trump said China's recent dispatch of a special envoy to Pyongyang seemed to have had, quote, no impact on curbing North Korea's ambitions. This as the U.S. formally submitted a brief to the World Trade Organization, joining the EU's ongoing opposition to granting China market economy status, citing Beijing's pervasive role in the running of the Chinese economy. Meanwhile, uh, new data out this week showed the U.S. sold billions in military equipment to the world this year. That's $42 billion worth. That's coming from the Defense Security Cooperation Agency, which is part of the Defense Department. It said this week in fiscal 2017, the U.S. logged some $42 billion dollars in sales of American military equipment, which is up $8.3 billion from last year, or about 25%. The majority, $32 billion, came through partner nations via the foreign military sales system, which the DSCA said demonstrated a strong demand for U.S. products and services. A separate report showed the most went to Central Asia and the Near East, followed by the Indo-Pacific and Europe. 
And before I go, some news Britain surely smiled about this week. Buckingham Palace officially announced Prince Harry's engagement to Hollywood actress Meghan Markle. And there's already chatter of what the economic effect their spring wedding could bring. A Bloomberg report put that figure at 80 million shoppers dollars, citing an estimate by British firm Center for Retail Research. That's keeping in mind that Prince Harry is the younger brother and fifth in line to the throne though some would agree just as charming. His older brother William's wedding to Kate Middleton six years ago had boosted visitor figures by 350,000 and 527 million pounds in UK retail spending, according to the UK Office of National Statistics. Harry's May 2018 nuptials to popular American drama Suits actress Meghan Markle is expected to be smaller in scale, but it is hard to put a figure on the extent excitement and anticipation of the first transatlantic royal wedding since Wallace Simpson in 1936. Meghan and Harry will probably have a lot more freedom to be able to do things the way they want to do them. I imagine there'll be still quite a lot of tradition, you know, we're British, we like, we like tradition. Um, but I imagine we'll see a really badass set of bridesmaids. They'll really have a guest list full of great people and friends. Um, and there'll be some special touches in there which will make it feel contemporary. All right, definitely looking forward to that wedding, right? British royalty meets Hollywood. Wow. Spring 2018 coming right up. All right, looking forward to it. Thank you so much for coming in today. You bet. And that wraps it up for today and this week. Thanks so much for watching. We'll be back next week with more at the same time, same place for your business daily. Until then, goodbye.